Hello, everybody. Welcome to Carter Street Talk. This is episode, oh, not starting out good, 18 or 19, I'm not sure. Um, but today I'm joined by Lars Myrand with um, the wet Yo, long hair, yeah. rocking it. Crazy long hair. Got some pandemic hair. Hey, guys. Carter Street Talk. <laughs> but, All right, let's um, talk some cards. Let's talk yeah. some card street. Okay. Uh, obvious reasons, super happy to have you on the show. So uh, I have a list of questions. I'll try to hit some. And then I also have some people that mm -hmm. submitted some stuff on Instagram. We'll try to hit up. But um, just cool. the first question I have for you is what do you feel about other people teaching your moves? Because I saw a lot of those mm -hmm. tutorials when I was looking at stuff uh, before this interview. Yeah. Especially one person, which I won't name, but there's a whole bunch of those. I mean, it's no secret, you know, that Iron Man guy. Um, yeah. It's not a big deal. It's really not. And I love seeing people do my moves. You know, um, if you ever like do one, tag it on Instagram. Like I see it. I look at all of them. It's, it's really fun. Even if it's not like the craziest smooth performance, like it's, it's sick, you know? Um, but just keep in mind that most of the tutorials aren't really good. Like basic, they usually get some mechanics wrong. Sometimes it's small. Sometimes it's pretty major it's um, not cool you know like especially without permission and stuff um yeah. but like i'm happy people want to do my moves you yeah. know that's that's great that they like your moves enough to yeah. want to try so to like figure it out on their own it. yeah i'm gonna try to avoid talking too much about carter street con because i know you've probably been asked a ton mm -hmm. about carter street con 2019 and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more interested in the stuff after that how do you think uh people specifically in the Carter Street community as well, uh, treat you mm. compared to before Carter Street Con? Not that different. I mean, like, I think just more people know about me. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's like super different. Cause like before Carter Street Con, before CCC, like I already knew people, you know, I was talking to Patrick, Chase, Andrew, you know, like, I don't know. I feel like I was kind of already in the scene before the competition, so. It's not really a big difference. Um, yeah, the card fame, it's like, it's super negligible compared to any other kind of thing. Like, I don't know, like it's not, it's like the least big deal to everyone else, but card people just go nuts, you know? So it's, uh, uh, it's chill. Do you have any tips for people that want to succeed into a, a cardistry competition like cardistry mm. con or the newly fontaine mm -hmm. trials things like that yeah that's a it's a really good question um so some basic stuff just understand the rules of the competition there's been some incredible people disqualified for unfortunate reasons before um plan be prepared uh take your time start early and if you can finish, send it to a friend, get some feedback and then make a second or third draft. Um, I think understanding the, the competition itself, like who won last year? Why did they win? You know, um, did the judges give feedback last year? You should read that, study that up too. And maybe a little bit on the judges themselves and like what they like and don't like and shouldn't be a big factor in what you do, but just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously hard work too. I was super hyped on all the CCCs, like 2016, I was like, it was exciting shit, you know? Like every time a video would come out, it's like, oh damn, look at all that crazy stuff. Like the uncuts in particular were really, really exciting. Um, and yeah, I would look at all the feedback and then sometimes I'm like, mm, I don't know what the judge is talking about there. And that's another thing I was going to want to potentially talk to you about is like judging in cardistry. Like how, how do you judge what makes a good cardist or makes one cardist better than another? It is subjective. You know, like I like some videos more than other videos and everyone has a different opinion. Um, just comes down to consensus basically. And like, I think in general judges and community, they kind of narrow in on certain things. And uh, there's certain patterns or certain trends that like we kind of agree, you know, closers are good. Normally the judges are very well qualified and have a good taste basically. So usually works out. Um, 
yeah, that is a good good question. But uh, what's it like working with uh, Trevor to make mm. playing cards and just creating? So I first heard about Trevor through Sam Pratt at the 2017 Cardistry Con, and Sam was like, "Yo, this kid is nuts. He's gonna be breakout cardist next year. All this crazy shit." And I was like, "Whatever, dude. Whatever." And then I didn't get to meet him till 20. 8 20 2018 yeah and like i think right off the bat i was like yo this kid's got something this kid's interesting he's a and yeah i don't know we started jamming sharing ideas and stuff and it was pretty clear like we're on the same wavelength we've got something in common like it's not easy to explain i guess but like there's something there it felt kind of destiny i don't know it feels like an edgar Macalco thing where it's just like makes sense so um yeah and I think um just working together a lot just jamming a lot of my moves you know he influenced maybe the other way around I'm not sure but just talking and yeah there's definitely like a group think going on to an extent but I think there's still some differences too so yeah just made sense to work together deep knowledge of like your moves i think that they can mm-hmm. potentially have a better idea of how to film it or show it off oh yeah oh my god yeah yeah no that's super important um and we try to film stuff in a bunch of different ways and it takes a long time and a really common thing with cardistry is like the performer does it perfectly but the cameraman like maybe messes up a little bit a lot of times like filming perfectly is harder than doing the move so, so that uh, cameraman performance dynamic is like such a big deal nowadays. How long do you think it would take to like, to film? How long do you think it takes to film like one move for you usually? I mean, it Just could be varies. a minute. It could be 30 seconds. It could be an hour if it's like really hard. Um, I mean, if it's like an easy move, it doesn't take too long. If there's like some elaborate setup going on where there's like weird lighting and like we got some crazy shit, then maybe it's harder. But uh, I mean, I think with CCC and like competitions, it's a little more boundary pushing where you're trying to do all these insane moves. So it takes a little longer. Um, But yeah, just kind of casually, it doesn't take too long. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting too. I don't know if you've experienced this, but a lot of the moves that I first made, I have trouble performing them because I, I haven't done them in so long. Oh, huh. so I don't know if you've experienced that ever before, but it's normally the, the opposite Really, <laughs> stuff I've been doing in a while. It's, it's no, no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I often get caught up when I'll make a move and then like, I'll be satisfied with it. And I'm like, okay, I'm never going to touch it again. <laughs> mm, <laughs> Cause okay. I want to create yeah, something new. <laughs> On to the next. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I mean, and a, a lot of that too is probably a lot of my first moves aren't very good, but. Um, mm. um, yeah. I think some moves like you once on camera and you're like, Whew, problem <laughs> solves. That's, that's the end of that. Um, but then other moves have like a more sustainable longevity. Okay. One question I got for you too. This is a very big one for me because I was curious about it uh, during some of your talks with other people. What's uh, what's going on with that rug thing in the background? What What is that? The tapestry? The tapestry, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tapestry. tapestry. It's like pretty basic shit. Yeah. I mean, I see... Um, I see like this exact one all the yeah. time. Like it's, I don't know, it's like a common fucking white girl college thing really. I don't know. Um, I just think it's cool. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I like them a lot. I think um, it's, uh, it's fun. One quote you said um, when talking with Jaspers and this like was mind bending for me at the time. Um, was that you said difficulty is occasionally a design flaw. And that is one of the best quotes ever made, I must say. <laughs> oh, man. You're welcome. I, mean, no. I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's great concept because I think a lot of people get caught up mm-hmm. in 
trying to make something that's difficult instead of focusing on something that's impressive. A lot of really impressive things are mm -hmm. simpler, like springs. But oh, um, yeah. okay. what do you find that you prefer to make simple moves or more difficult moves? Um, well, first off, uh, first of all, I got to give Sam credit for that quote. Yeah. That was like a direct thing that he told me. I did not like originally have that idea at all. Um, but I like to make everything. I like to make some moves that are literally only possible once and then some moves that are really easy. I think both hard moves and easy moves have a place and are important and should be valued and honored. Um, and it's, it's pretty obvious, like hard moves are hard, easy moves are easy, you know, like there's no need to overthink it. Um, but I think the, the important takeaway is a lot of the times, like you want to capture like a certain idea, like a certain thing, like a certain visual maybe, and you're trying to do it through this really hard method, but oftentimes there's like a much easier version that like basically accomplishes the same thing. Um, sometimes that's just like a really subtle mechanic shift, like moving your pinky a tiny bit one direction, or it's like more of a major design change. But in general, yeah. Yeah, the message is just, if you can do it simpler, then why not? Yeah. I think it's interesting too, people get so caught up in trying to create something one way and instead of looking at all the options or just leaving it and coming back to it. Yeah, you gotta take your time. Mm -hmm. uh, just in general, what's your creative process like when when creating these moves is it very- Oh time? man, oh man. All right, <laughs> let me get out the whiteboard. Let me uh, get out the <laughs> Get slides. some Matthew Badois analytics going. Yeah, let's uh, run the numbers, man. It's not simple, you know, like people have written encyclopedias on the creative process and shit like that. But like um, some basic principles to think of is a lot of stuff is iterative. It is like component based. So you have a bunch of little ideas and you kind of put them together or expand on them. Having an idea, what do you want to make? If you like really want to make something, you probably will. You know, so having some idea or some uh, passion for it, you know, like that really, really helps. I really like the idea of like having an idea, like having an idea for a move and then trying to make it happen mm. instead of trying to force mm. something random to happen. Because I think a lot of people just go in this free form mode that nothing gets done. Yeah, I think um, I think that's easier though, just to kind of mess around. That's a lot easier. Matt, um, I think it was actually Dimitri that kind of suggested the difference be between head and hand thinking. So head thinking, you know, you visualize something, you got some idea and then apply it to the cards. And then hand thinking is kind of more fiddly, more just what is possible. Um, I don't know, at least in my experience, hand thinking is much easier. It's much faster. It's much more practical. And then head thinking usually like, you know, you think of something and it doesn't work. Um, so you need both, basically. Getting back on the quote train, you once said, if you're not having fun, why, why do it type of something like that nature? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you should still work hard, you know, like, but if you're not enjoying the work, it's a balance. Mm -hmm. And like not trying to force yourself to create something, yeah. I think yeah. for some people is important. Mm -hmm. um some people i think when they have a deadline they might actually flourish like i think maybe like mm. lewis macalco and edgar isaac might be like that from what i've seen maybe not but i think it, the deadlines helped me a lot mm -hmm. definitely especially like with the final um because it's like well everyone's looking at me <laughs> i gotta do something <laughs> let's go do, do you find that there's like a pressure on you during those moments yeah, totally. I mean, it wasn't too stressful because, you know, like I wanted to make moves. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make videos, so it worked out. Do you have any other hobbies outside of cardistry? Uh, cardistry is like the hobby, you know? 
Mm-hmm. Like when I found cardistry, I was like, oh, this is it. Yeah, you know, wow, that, that's that's it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I do like, I used to rock climb a lot, not too much nowadays. Uh, photography is another really cool one. But yeah, no, it's it's pretty much cards. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much cards yeah, yeah I, uh, I'd love to like dabble in some other stuff but uh, just knowing like how hard it is to advance in stuff like I kind of want to focus that on cards if I mm-hmm. can do you find you'll you'll be really into something and then you'll be like then you'll get tired of it real quick after like a month or so um or it's just cards <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cards kind of like uh, oh you know, a couple of years ago i think i did that a lot mm-hmm. nowadays not so much yeah so what other stuff uh do you do you like speed cube or something i learned oh, how to cube. soccer yes you, wow soccer that's weird kid. i do my research too snap oh it is always super weird when like I message somebody and they're like, yeah, I know who you are. I'm like, oh, how, <laughs> why? <laughs> I guess you might live a little bit closer to more cars than I probably do, mm-hmm. but do you mm-hmm. find like it's a similar amount of interaction? Because that's what I've found from a lot of other guests is that mm-hmm. even though COVID is going on right now, like they didn't really meet people in public anyways. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's a little different here in the Bay Area because we did meet like pretty often, like every other month or something. We would like try to get like a decent sized thing going on. We were just about to start a monthly jam. We were so close and then COVID hit. So, um, you know, it has dramatically slowed down. And the Cardis are pretty spread out amongst the area here. So it's kind of hard to see each other. Um, but I basically just stay in touch with Trevor and Kyle pretty well. Do you like learning other people's moves or like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Especially cuts. Um, cause I think like fans and stuff, I don't know. It's not as fun to learn, honestly, <laughs> like a lot of cuts just feel good. Um, love learning cuts. Um, like Nikolai cuts, especially they just like yeah, they just feel like way too perfect. Like the fingers were just supposed to go where they go. Mm-hmm. Um, I I've always thought like if I can create something, I would rather take the time to mm-hmm. do that than mm-hmm. learn someone else's moves. But I yeah. also think that that doesn't open you up to as many possibilities um but i always also don't want to be like influenced by what other people are doing and put it Mm -hmm. into what i'm trying to create i think some people are more impressionable than others like i think i can learn a bunch of moves and still make moves you know and not Mm -hmm. be like misled or something like that um but maybe if you're earlier on or something and like maybe only no Tobias moves and no other moves, you might have like a, a Tobias. Um, Tobias. But I think learning moves is very important because like when I started out, I didn't really know moves. And then I learned flip phone. My life changed instantly. I, I didn't know that's like what cardistry could be. Like it was a, it was a whole new thing. If you don't know flip phone, you should learn flip phone. Um, yeah, no, that taught me so much about like what cardistry could be and like how it was different from what I was doing. So kind of ex- expanding your horizons a little bit by learning some stuff can help. Um, yeah, it's, you don't always need to learn stuff. Like I tried learning squall, huge mistake, huge waste of time. <laughs> don't learn squall. That's a... It's just fucking stupid. I wish I could do squall, but. I mean, early on too, I don't know that you should try to be making, uh, I don't know, like just beginning out. Could, yeah. Yeah. try some stuff for sure. I think maybe just getting in the creative mindset and process might be important, Mm -hmm. but like Mm -hmm. everybody knows like the person that makes something with a Charlier cut and is like, is this new? (laughs) Yeah. Everybody's experienced that. And then immediately 
hordes uh, of people just <laughs> oh, man. this was made 10 years ago <laughs> they got like a lego love variation yeah. yeah yeah i think you should still try to make stuff no matter what skill level and there's so many different creative paths like you can just do like video shit like super intensely and like i don't know that's creative cardistry too in my opinion so like yeah you can like just do car destroy you can like there's a lot of different options you know Mm -hmm. i was talking with cam toner earlier i don't don't know if you uh, he's the owner of organic playing cards and he said like even if you make a move that someone already has made you're already in the creative process and making something that was like already successful right like it doesn't downplay the fact that you made something because it's already been created because it still came from you if that makes any sense no that's uh yeah no it's not like it's not a bad thing that you made a good move you know that's that's dope um and that does happen you know not super often but uh yeah yeah if anything it shows you that you're on the the right framework to get Mm -hmm. to that to those inverginal moves someone else uh, agrees with you exactly yeah yeah, one thing I want to talk about too that I, I love that you did was uh, the Mortal Man video and just kind of mm-hmm. showcasing some of the mistakes you've made along Car Street Con 19 and showing like mm-hmm. they weren't all one takes. Because I think it's, it's really easy as viewers to think other people are perfect or are like doing amazing things and not having any challenges with it. Um, cause like, there's the whole notion of like doing something really impressive and then acting like it was, it was not hard, you know, first try every try. Yeah. 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 No, I love that video. That's like, I almost like it more than the video, like the actual rounds, like it just plays like a fun video and it's easy to watch. Um, yeah. And I think the, the lesson is a little twofold. It's both that people do mess up, you know? But it's also, I think it's more personal too. Like me and Aslan are really talented and stuff, but we make mistakes. So it's kind of balancing that out. Like, um, and if you're familiar with the song, it's basically saying like, while you praise Kendrick today for making an incredible album and being amazing, how would your opinion change if something happens, if he gets in some scandal or something? So uh, it's really trying to align with the actual song yeah yeah i really like the shot where so that final move of the final video it ends like just before it gets full circle and then later you find out like i fucked it up and i didn't even do it right at the end of the show i usually do a Mm -hmm. rapid round of questions so it's like three minute timer and the goal is to get through as many random questions as possible and they're like quick things like iphone or android type of thing easy let's go all right you ready for this i'm ready okay starting the timer favorite restaurant (laughs) bad start Uh uh there's a place in portland called thai peacock which is really good Cats or dogs? Cats. But they're both cool. Yeah. Um, iPhone or Android? I, I use iPhone, but both are cool. Uh, do you play video games? No. So you don't have a favorite. Question I always have to ask, toilet paper over or under? Do you know the like, context? Like just normal toilet paper? Uh, yeah. So oh, how the roll hangs off. Like what do you use it for? Hmm? Just for um... to clean up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's how the roll um like... Yeah, obviously over. Yeah. Okay. No question. Right. I always have to ask that question because I get peer pressured into it. I don't know why. Who is the most famous cardist you've met? Zach, I guess. Just look in the mirror. Uh, superpower. <laughs> yeah. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Time travel, maybe? And pancakes or waffles? Waffles. 
done. <laughs> uh, describe your perfect day. That's not a quick question. <laughs> that's a, that's a you gotta keep it fresh, man. You gotta it's, get some. It's good. Problem solved. Uh, pineapples on pizza, yes or no? Yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, favorite TV show right now? Bojack Horseman. Coke or Pepsi? Uh, coffee. Coffee. <laughs> Um, if you could add any word to the dictionary, what would it be? Um, cardistry. Packet cut, maybe? Cardistry, uh, yeah. yeah. We need to make a petition. Um, Honestly. If an, actor portrayed, if an actor portrayed you in a movie, who would you want it to be? Kyle Tran. Yeah. His fee would be pretty steep, but... Uh, yeah, if, if we can, if we can you're not them. the first person to answer that question with Kyle Tran. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, Damn. Kyle Law did. The, he is. And, mm. Okay, you know who he is. Um, yeah. Summer or winter? Summer. Have you ever broken a bone? So I broke my, I fractured my pinky twice, but I don't remember which one was which. So it might have been both or it might have been one. Yeah. And I think it does loudly affect how I hold cards. The more you know. Yeah. The more you know. Car Street Talk exclusive. Timer went off while you were answering that question. So I'll tally up how many questions that was in the edit. I'm not sure now. But um, the high score was like 15, I think, uh, at the mm -hmm. moment. But thank you for participating in the rapid round of questions and for taking your time to talk. Um, at the end of the show, I like to do what I call roll up, roll out the close up pad. Is there anything you would want to promote or any last nugget you would want to mm. leave the audience with? Um, it's too late to vote. So I <laughs> yeah. can't plug that. Uh, the Eric Andre show Sundays, 8 PM Eastern time, I think midnight Eastern time. That's a good one. Um, yeah. There you go. There you go. Eric Andre show. It, Check yeah, it out. It's a crazy show. Um, yep. Thank you once again, Lars, for being on the show. Thank you guys for watching all the way or listening if you are listening. I appreciate it, and I hope everybody has a fantastic day. See you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>